Finally, the US government is moving in the right direction in dealing with competition from China, and largely thanks to a push from Biden! The House of Congress has finally just passed a bill for $280 billion for domestic chip research and manufacture. So I'm going to break this down, explaining what this means for the industry and what I'm doing as an investor. Here we go. So here's a quick rundown of the bill and why it's so important. The semiconductor industry has been growing rapidly over the last few years due to smart cars, smartphones and COVID-19 causing massive disruptions to the industry through the shutdown of factories and disruption to supply chains, with various industries falling behind on their manufacture as a result. Despite having invented the semiconductor, the US has fallen behind in their chip manufacturer and whereas they have the largest chip designers in the world, a large proportion of the manufacturer is shipped to Taiwan, namely Taiwan Semiconductor, who manufacture chips for NVIDIA, AMD, Broadcom, Apple, Qualcomm, to name a few. According to Semiconductor Industry Association, as of 2021, the US represents just 12% of global manufacture, compared to 37% in 1990, which is poor when the US represents almost half of the semiconductor market and it's their fourth biggest export behind aircraft, oil and autos. Intel is an extreme example of how far the industry has fallen, with their latest earnings report showing worse quarterly results, missing their earnings per share by a whopping 58.31%, hitting just 29 of their 70 cents target and slashing their four year guidance, with revenues declining 22% year on year and ending with a $454 million net loss compared to their $5 billion net income from last year. All the while, Taiwan Semi is accelerating on all fronts. Intel's failure is a combination of poor decision making, a lack of innovation and competition neglect which allowed Apple and AMD to blindside them with their more advanced chip programs, which Taiwan were more than capable of manufacturing. Add to that the general decline in desktop computer sales and a failure for Intel to capitalize on the mobile phone market, this left them falling behind as their competitors dominated the market. Intel are currently having to reconsider their Meteor Lake chip manufacturing techniques to mirror Taiwan Semi's 5 nanometer process to try and catch up with Apple's M1 series of chips. With the industry putting all their eggs in one Taiwanese basket, the US has left themselves to the mercy of a single chip manufacturer and a single country. Yeah, I said country. Fuck you, CCP. And this has left the industry at risk due to the rising tensions between China on the issue of Taiwan sovereignty, but also for the ability of a single company to provide such a large proportion of the market during turbulent geopolitical events. The war in Ukraine has caused the US to allocate over $54 billion of funding so far, and if we were to consider just one of the weapons supplied, that's the Javelin anti-tank missile system manufactured by Lockheed Martin, of which 5,500 have been used so far, and you've likely seen Ukrainian soldiers using them to kick Russia's ass. Just one of these missiles contains 209 chips. Lockheed are having to increase production to continue supplying and replenishing USA reserves, but you can see that a shortage of chips is a national security issue for the country. Last month, the Wall Street Journal reported that TSMC has warned customers they may not be able to increase production until 2023 and 24 because of issues acquiring manufacturing equipment, some of which has already been prioritized to Chinese manufacturers who are heavily invested into expanding their production. Companies have tried to move away from Taiwan and AMD and Qualcomm are attempted to move some of their manufacture to Samsung. But Qualcomm had to reverse this decision when they found that Samsung was showing just a 35% yield in their latest 3 nanometer Snapdragon chip production, meaning only 35% of those produced were usable, whereas Taiwan Semi's production yield was closer to 70%. So focusing manufacture to domestic facilities is no guarantee of success if they do not have the innovation, manufacturing processes or scale to manufacture the chips in demand. 
The technology industry is highly competitive and success is determined by the ability to deliver the latest and more advanced components. So tech companies cannot afford to be patient with manufacturers. If you want first, you might as well be last. If you ain't first, you're last. Gene, if you ain't first, you're last. If you ain't first, you're last. What the hell are you talking about? The Western industry needs to catch up with former manufacturer and that's why the CHIPS Act is so essential and a much needed boot up the ass. So here's a breakdown. The $280 billion CHIPS bill includes the following. $52.7 billion spread over five years for the domestic manufacture of chips, which includes $2 billion specifically allocated to basic chips, a $39 billion incentive program for legacy chips, that's for auto, defense, and other vital industries, $11 billion for research and development, which includes workforce development, and by comparison, $44 billion was spent on research and development by the overall industry in 2020, $500 million for negotiate with foreign governments to maintain supply chain security. The bill also includes an estimated $24 billion to cover a 25% investment tax credit for semiconductor plants, $81 billion for the National Science Foundation, which supports research and education in science engineering, $10 billion for regional technology hubs, and $68 billion for the Department of Energy. The focus of the bill is to address USA's national security needs and re-establish the country as the center of technology innovation. The funding is conditional on the companies not expanding their advanced chip production to countries of concern, namely China, and it cannot be used towards stock buybacks or dividends, which is a big change to the COVID support packages. Of course, the bill can be criticized by the likes of Bernie Sanders, who called it a bribe to already profitable semiconductor companies. But I disagree with this viewpoint. Too many countries have exported production to other parts of the world so that exploited workers can manufacture them cheaper under poorer working conditions, just so we can have cheaper iPhones. Whereas countries such as China have no issue stealing intellectual properties from anything they manufacture. The idea of an incentive to pull back manufacturing to the domestic markets creates an opportunity to expand a home workforce, while the semiconductor industry in the USA alone is expected to need 70 to 90,000 additional high-skilled workers by 2025 to keep up with demand. Bringing production home is a chance to stick a finger up at foreign companies too willing to overwork and underpay their workers whilst they steal technology, they lack the innovation to invent themselves. The CHIPS Act is not alone in this approach, with China, South Korea and Europe all investing huge amounts into their own chip production to address increasing demand. With the CHIPS bill granting them funding to expand their facilities and their research and development, this is shown to go hand in hand with job creation. But due to timescales of research to production, where building a new chip factory can take three to five years and cost 10 to 20 billion dollars, the pipeline from research to sales can be extensive. It will be some time before the industry actually profits from the bill's funds. Also, in contrast to the last two years where we saw many stuck at home and manufacturers playing catch up with a global chip demand growing to $450 billion of sales, device makers such as Micron are already seeing this demand fall as fears of inflation has caused consumers to scale back their technology purchases and semiconductor stocks are already seeing a pullback from investors. For that reason, I don't think the bill is a reason to start jumping on chip companies like there's no tomorrow, especially in today's market where stocks are likely to be pumped up on positive media coverage regardless of the facts. Most chip companies have been priced in and are coming down from their peaks, and to be specific about Intel, despite trading at low fundamentals and offering a great dividend yield, they are far behind the curve and the stock is a value trap. Ow. Transfer emergency power to the anti-matter can take it easy. I don't know, I can't keep going here, sir. So instead, I'm looking at the suppliers of complex manufactured equipment needed for chip production, who I think will benefit massively from the physical expansions over the years. ASML, a Dutch company and the largest manufacturer of lithography machines that are critical to semiconductor industry. Applied Materials, a US company supplying equipment, software and services for the semiconductor manufacturer. And LAM Research, a US supplier of fabrication equipment for the chip industry. All these companies are profitable and have been showing year on year growth in revenue, profits and net income for shareholders. All hitting around the $1.5 billion mark last quarter and continuing to grow. Out of the group, LAM Research seems to be doing exceptionally well in their earnings growth, but I'm not seeing much growth in shareholder equity. 
ASML is growing rapidly, but the fundamentals suggest it's already been heavily priced in, and I think the stock is the most expensive out of the group. I'm personally focused on Applied Materials, who are showing growth in all areas. The stock has come down from its January high of $167 and currently trades at 12 times earnings and 3.81 times sales, making them technically the cheapest out of the group. July has the stock bouncing from its lows and may represent a decent buying opportunity. I've started buying this week and I'm already up by a percent and I plan to grow my position over the next few months taking account of continuing volatility in the markets. In March, the board announced a $6 billion share buyback program and increased their quarterly cash dividend by 8.3%. So, trading at $105, that represents a dividend yield of about 1%, which is great for investors who love a dividend. The chip spill is going to give a much needed boot up the ass to domestic chip production, but there is going to be a fairly long delay between research and development to factory production. With the bill spread in the budget over a five year period, the industry is not going to change overnight and I would urge caution against making massive purchases in chip companies whilst the industry has shown signs of a slowdown and the market in general continues to be volatile. As American companies build their additional facilities, they will need to source manufactured equipment which is in high demand and short supply, and that's where I think investors should be focusing. I've listed three companies who stand and make a fortune out of the growth in the industry and I've already started investing with the expectation of further buying opportunities down the road and I plan to hold for at least two to five years. So that's my take and I may consider deep diving one of these companies depending on the interest from viewers. So if you have any thoughts comment below let me know and remember smash that like button and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on further videos. Until next time. <laughs>